President Oaks taught us many things in this message. He explained that our church is different from other churches because we have the fullness of the doctrine of Jesus Christ. He said, quote, Foremost among that doctrine is the fact that our Heavenly Father loves all His children so much that He wants us all to live in a kingdom of glory forever. Moreover, He wants us to live with Him and His Son, Jesus Christ, eternally. He first explained that because we have modern revelation, we know that the idea heaven is for the righteous and eternal sufferings of hell is for the rest is not the full truth. Jesus said, in my father's house are many mansions. President Oak said, quote, we know from modern revelation that all kingdoms have a law given and that the kingdom of glory we receive in the final judgment is determined by the laws we choose to follow in our mortal journey. Under that loving plan, there are multiple kingdoms, many mansions, so that all of God's children will inherit a kingdom of glory whose laws they can comfortably abide. The first and highest kingdom is the celestial kingdom. The Apostle Paul compared this to the sun. President Oak said, Quote, in the celestial glory, there are three levels, of which the highest is exaltation in the celestial kingdom. This is the dwelling of those who have received of his fullness and of his glory. Wherefore, they are gods, even the sons and daughters of God, and dwell in the presence of God and his Christ forever and ever. Through revelation, God has revealed the eternal laws, ordinances, and covenants that must be observed to develop the godly attributes necessary to realize this divine potential. The Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints focuses on these because the purpose of this restored church is to prepare God's children for salvation in the celestial glory and more particularly for exaltation in its highest degree. God's plan founded on eternal truth requires that exaltation can be attained only through faithfulness to the covenants of an eternal marriage between a man and a woman in the holy temple which marriage will ultimately be available to all the faithful. That is why we teach that gender is an essential characteristic of individual, pre-mortal, mortal, and eternal identity and purpose. Paul described the next two levels as the moon and the stars. The second level is the terrestrial kingdom. President Oak shared these statements, quote, Those who do not choose to abide the law of a celestial kingdom will inherit another kingdom of glory, lesser than the celestial but suited to the laws they have chosen and can comfortably abide. Those in the terrestrial kingdom are they who receive of the presence of the Son but not of the fullness of the Father. They are honorable men of the earth who are blinded by the craftiness of men but not valiant in the testimony of Jesus." Unquote. Through revelation to Joseph Smith, we know the third level is telestial. President Oak said, quote, The revealing description of those assigned to the lowest of the kingdoms of glory, the telestial, is he who cannot abide a terrestrial glory. That describes those who reject the Savior and have observed no divine limits on their behavior. This is the kingdom where the wicked abide after they have suffered for their sins. Unquote. President Russell M. Nelson recently wrote, Mortal lifetime is barely a nanosecond compared with eternity, but what a crucial nanosecond it is. Consider carefully how it works. During this mortal life, you get to choose which laws you are willing to obey, those of the celestial kingdom or the terrestrial or the telestial, and therefore in which kingdom of glory you will live forever. What a plan. It is a plan that completely honors your agency." Unquote. President Oaks concluded his talk by explaining the hope of the final judgment. He said, quote, After a period in which the disobedient suffer for their sins, which suffering prepares them for what is to follow, all will be resurrected and proceed to the final judgment of the Lord Jesus Christ, who, we are taught, glorifies the Father and saves all the works of his hands, will send all the children of God to one of these kingdoms of glory, 
according to the desires manifested through their choices. The final judgment is not just an evaluation of a sum total of good and evil acts, what we have done. It is based on the final effect of our acts and thoughts, what we have become. Because of Jesus Christ and his atonement, when we fall short in this life, we can repent and rejoin the covenant path that leads to what our Heavenly Father desires for us." Unquote. Thanks for watching. I'm a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Something special happens every six months in our church. It is a worldwide conference where we hear our beloved prophets speak, as well as the 12 apostles and many other wonderful church leaders. We gather in person or through internet and other forms of communication. We receive over eight hours of Christ-centered messages.